Y'all read the title of the video. I never thought this day would come, but it's safe to say that at this current point in time, the MCU is in shambles. So yesterday, Variety dropped a massive article titled Crisis at Marvel that basically details a lot of the disasters that are going on behind the scenes at Marvel Studios right now. And before we get out of the way and dive into this article, I want to say this because y'all know me, bro. I started this channel talking about Marvel. I love Marvel. I love the MCU. Even now at this current, with the current state of the MCU, I'm still going to ride for this franchise because I've grown up with it. It's given me memories that I'll cherish with me till the day I die. It's completely changed and transformed my life for the better. So everything I say in this video is straight up out of love because I love Marvel. I love the MCU. I always have and I always will. And I think out of love, it's important for us to, to sometimes just take a stand and say, yo, we love this universe so much. There has to be change in order for it to return back to what it once was, in order for it to uphold the standard that us as fans are used to getting with every single one of their projects. Now, it's important to note that not everything Marvel has put out these past couple of years has been bad. I mean, we've gotten Guardians 3, No Way Home, Shang-Chi, Wakanda Forever, WandaVision, Loki. Marvel has still had their hits over these past few years. But overall, as a collective universe, the quality has been inconsistent. And that's something we're not really used to seeing when it comes to the MCU. When it came to the Infinity Saga, there was so much connection and there was so much of a unified vision that every single project led right into the next. And it was all just a never ending hype train. Whereas with phase four and five, it's felt extremely disconnected. We've, we've been introduced to so many different heroes that are good when we meet them, but we don't even know if we're ever going to see them again or when we're going to see them again. So there has definitely been some stumbles along the way with when it comes to the MC with phase four and phase five. But as Charles Xavier once said, just because someone stumbles and loses their way doesn't mean they're lost forever. And it's important that us as fans voice our criticisms, voice the way we feel about the current MCU in order for Marvel to make the necessary changes to pioneer us in the right direction. Because if we, if we sat here and just praised everything and everything is perfect all the time, then guess what? Marvel's just going to continue to keep doing what they've been doing. Continue to put out six episode Disney Plus shows that feel extremely rushed, that are just... I'm gonna save my thoughts for a later date. So diving into the things this Variety article brings up, it starts off by talking about how this September, Kevin Feige and all of the Marvel executives had their annual Marvel retreat where they basically go someplace else and they just sit there and they analyze the MCU, what's working, what's not working, and then they course correct. So this is something that's happened for years and years and years and it's how the MCU has in great detail, it's it's how it's gotten to where it is because Kevin Feige and the team are always meeting. They're always looking on what to improve. So, but this year it was a little different because this year they had a ton of fires, disasters they had to bring up and address. So it wasn't the same Marvel that had the retreat in 2019 once Endgame came out and everything was at its peak and everything already happened. Now this year, this year's retreat was a little bit different. Starting off with one of the big problems that Marvel addressed or is currently addressing is the Jonathan Majors Kang the Conqueror situation. Marvel was very quick to say this entire multiverse saga is being built on the shoulders of Jonathan Majors. And we've all heard of the pu very public legal battles that Jonathan Majors is currently going through. So it, only time will tell on that on how that works out. But it said that Marvel was already questioning and discussing on moving forward from Kang after the release of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania because that film just did not perform at the box office. Now, I'm going to sit here and tell you, again, all of, the, all of the legal drama aside, if we're just looking at what Jonathan Majors brought to the table for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania as Kang the Conqueror, he was without a doubt the best part of that movie. The failure of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania should not fall on the shoulders of Jonathan Majors. But after that film underperformed at the box office, I guess basically Marvel took that feedback and they said, yo, should we really be putting the shoulders of this entire saga on Kang if this movie underperformed at the box office? You know, who's to say that people are going to show up for the next one where Kang is still going to be the main villain? So Marvel has been discussing that for quite some time now. Another thing that's been potentially brought up is moving forward from Kang into Doctor Doom and having Doctor Doom be the centerpiece of the multiverse saga. They've had those discussions. Nothing is really final, but the fact that they are having these discussions means 
that they don't really know where they're going right now. I mean, we're currently in the middle of Loki season two, and that is for sure going to continue to set up Kang and set up the things that are in store for him. So I don't think that going switching over so quickly to Doctor Doom would be the right direction to go. I think if worst comes to worst, Marvel should, you know, depending on the way the legal battles work out, Marvel should completely recast Jonathan Majors and move forward with Kang. We spent so much time, guys, building up Kang with the Loki series, with all of the multiverse stuff. We, if it's felt like the entire phase four and phase five has all been just putting all of their chips into Kang. So moving forward from Kang into with into Doctor Doom, don't get me excited, I'm super excited to see Doctor Doom, but completely abandoning what we built with Kang would feel like such a disservice to everything we've gotten up to this point. With Loki, with uh, no Way Home, with Multiverse of Madness, with WandaVision, with all of the stuff that's continued to just build up the lore behind the multiverse, continuing to tease what's to come with Kang. And let's not act like Marvel hasn't recasted people before, and Kang is arguably the easiest person to ever recast because he just has a million different variants out there. So you could literally just have, let's say Marvel wants to recast with, uh, John Boyega with uh, John David Washington, whatever the case may be. You just literally have that variant of Kang that's played by that actor come in and mop all of the other Kangs. And right there, you have a villain that is way more menacing than any of the other Kangs we've gotten in the past. And that is an easy way to just recast Kang and set up a new Kang variant to be the ultimate crescendo piece that's going to bring the entire multiverse together. Now, another thing this Variety article mentioned, which absolutely blew my mind, was what they were talking about when it comes to the Blade movie that's supposed to star Mahershala Ali. This was a film that, that was announced in 2019, and I wanna be, make it very clear that guys, this wasn't a movie that Marvel originally had planned. Mahershala Ali, after winning an Oscar, called up Kevin Feige and said, I wanna do Blade. That is the most like home run, no, knock it out of the park, easiest thing to do. Just a, a solid standalone Blade film with Mahershala Ali and that's it. And this film has been in development hell for years. And uh, now, you know, we've gotten some details on what's been going on with all of the different scripts. Apparently at one point, one of the scripts had the story revolving around a group of women teaching us life lessons and Blade was the fourth most important character in the movie. First of all, I don't understand how in any film, your title character could be the fourth most important character, let alone having that character be played by Oscar-winning actor Mahershala Ali. Like, what happens to us just getting a movie about a dude killing vampires and just saucing people up? That's literally all we're asking for. Again, it's the easiest thing on the surface. It's the easiest thing to do. But now, again, on the, we're looking to the bright side now. Kevin Feige basically saw that and he said, yo, screw all of that. You're all fired. I'm hiring the writer of Logan and he's going to write us a new script. And Mahershala was already ready to leave the project because there's been so much going on with it behind the scenes that now the, the, the writer of Logan, who is obviously a very competent writer, Logan is one of the greatest comic book movies of all time. Now he's writing the new script and Mahershala is still on board. So hopefully this Blade movie actually turns a turn, takes a turn for the better and we can finally get this film. And apparently, or, you know, one of the tidbits that they had in there was that the film is now being made to, it's, it's now being made with a budget that's projected to be under $100 million. So it'd be one of the cheaper Marvel films. And when it comes to a Blade film, that's definitely a film they can make for under $100 million because the action could be so practical. You know, the, the action in the OG Wesley Snipes movies were, was fire as hell. So imagine what they could do now today in the present day with someone like Mahershala Ali. Sign me up. I just mar hope Marvel, well, I'm glad Marvel made the necessary steps because I swear to God, if we got a Blade movie where Blade is the fourth fourth most important character and it's the movie, the movie is just led by just a group of women teaching us life lessons and Blade is just in the background over there, People would have walked out of the theater straight up. Now a massive fire that's been happening over at Marvel Studios for a while now is how they've been handling the Disney Plus shows. You know, this has been a completely new territory for Marvel when it comes to phase four and phase five because they didn't need to worry about no Disney Plus shows when it came to the Infinity Saga. But now when it comes to Disney Plus, Marvel has been making the necessary adjustments to actually make these shows 
and uphold the quality that we're used to when it comes to the MCU. When it comes to Daredevil Born Again, we recently heard that they completely scrapped everything that they did with Daredevil Born Again, and now they're starting over completely fresh with showrunners, and they actually got the same showrunners that ran the OG Netflix Punisher show with John Bernthal. So that's super exciting. And they also have the same directors that directed the majority of the Loki episodes coming to direct Daredevil Born Again. So I'm super optimistic about that. And I'm glad, again, Marvel is making the necessary moves. Because uh, when, when they make these moves, they know this isn't going to look good to the public. They know, they know when it's announced that they're scrapping everything they've done for Daredevil Born Again and starting over fresh. That's not a good look. But they're still willing to go through that in order to give us the best product they could possibly make. And props to Marvel for that. One thing that was mentioned in this article was that the She-Hulk series cost over $225 million. To put that into perspective, that's more expensive than the budget for the first Avengers movie. Don't know how that's possible, but I digress. Now guys, I highly recommend you guys go and check out this article and read it for yourself. I'm going to link it in the description below because there's just a lot to dive in there. But the biggest thing by far in this entire article is that Marvel has been discussing plans to revive Robert Downey Jr. and Scarlett Johansson as Tony Stark and Black Widow and bringing back the original Avengers for a new Avengers movie. Now there are multiple ways you can look at this. When I hear the word reviving Tony Stark and reviving Black Widow, to me, that sounds like they're actually reviving the characters that made those amazing sacrifices that made Avengers Endgame so special. And the thought of that is insane because it would completely take away what made Endgame so special. Tony Stark's death, Tony Stark's funeral, Natasha's sacrifice for the Soul Stone. That is what made Endgame so special. And if they revive these characters, it completely takes away all of that. Now, that is completely different than Tony Stark and Black Widow appearing as variants of themselves in Secret Wars. We all expected that. We all expect that, that, that that's what Secret Wars is going to be. It's going to be a ton of variants of different Marvel characters we all know and love that we all grew up with coming together and interacting with other variants. Seeing Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man interact with Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, interacting with Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man. Now, it's not going to be the same Iron Man that we know from Endgame, but it's going to be a different variant. And that would still be pretty damn epic, and that's what we all expect out of Secret Wars. But that is not what this article sounds like it's referring to. This article is saying it's reviving Tony Stark and Black Widow, and to me, when I hear that, not once for a second did I ever hear anyone saying that Marvel's reviving Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. No, because this Wolverine we're seeing in Deadpool 3 is just a different variant or he's coming from a different point in time. But at no point was anyone saying, oh, Marvel's reviving Hugh Jackman's Wolverine because they've said it multiple times that the, Lo that the Wolverine in Logan is completely separate from the Wolverine we're going to see in Deadpool 3. So when it comes to all of this multiverse stuff and bringing back the OG Avengers, I think we all kind of expected that the original OG Avengers would come back in something like Secret Wars. But when I hear the term reviving Tony Stark and reviving Black Widow, to me, one, there's no longevity in that because these, these characters and these actors have already dedicated over a decade of their lives to these roles. And realistically speaking, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, uh, Scarlett Johansson, and the OG gang they're not going to come back and just reprise these roles consistently the way they used to in the Infinity Saga that revolved completely around them. They've already said goodbye to their characters. They've already had that moment that that where we sat down during the end during the credits of Endgame and we saw all of their signatures and that was their goodbye wave to the to the audience. They've already had that moment, so there's no way in hell that they would come back consistently, but even if they revive Tony Stark and Black Widow for a new Avengers movie, to me that takes away a lot of what made Endgame so special, which is the fact that it was the Endgame. It was us saying bye to the journey that we've been on for the past 10 years. To me, it's just a movie that screams desperation because Marvel knows where that at this point in time with the MCU. I'm sorry, a White Vision series isn't gonna bring the MCU back to its glory days. We need superstars in the game. The X-Men are on the bench right now and it's time to cue them in. The Fantastic Four, we know we're on the way. All of the characters in Deadpool 3, we know they're on the way. Everything that's going down in Secret Wars, that's going to be fire. But Marvel needs to put the superstars back in the game because when it comes to Phase 4, you know, someone actually did the math. We've met 57 new superheroes 
in phase four and phase five alone. And at this point in time, we don't know the next time we're going to see Shang-Chi. We don't know the next time we're going to see the Eternals. No, if you want to get pe butts in seats and, and you want to get people invested in the MCU again, you have to bring in the superstars that people actually care about outside of the movies. The X-Men have always been Marvel's most popular group of characters and you know, Marvel purchased them in 2019 and they've just been sitting on the bench now while we're getting freaking a White Vision series, a Wonder Man series, an Echo series, Agatha, Ironheart, all that stuff. And a lot of that stuff I just mentioned, some of that stuff is actually exciting. But again, with the current state of the MCU, they need to bring superstars in the game because this is what people want, this is what the fans want, and this is what people are going to show up for. And at the end of the day, that's why Secret Wars is going to be what it's going to be. This is why it's going to be an absolute like nostalgia fest, as a lot of people want to describe it. Because Marvel knows that the only way they're going to get Secret Wars to compete to a fraction of what Avengers Endgame made at the box office, which Avengers Endgame was the highest grossing movie of all time when it came out. So the only way they're going to get Secret Wars to match those numbers or potentially even surpass it is by bringing back the characters that people are invested in. And we haven't had enough time with all of these new characters that we've met to truly invest, to truly be invested in them the way we were with Captain America, Tony Stark, Thor, and the OG Avengers when it came time for Infinity War and Endgame. Again, everything I've said in today's video is coming from a place of love because y'all know I love Marvel. I'll ride with this franchise to the day I die. And even now at this point in time where the MCU may be in shambles, I'm still here for Kevin Feige and the team to pick up the shambles and put it all together and make something extraordinary. Something that we're all used to when it comes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The most successful studio in Hollywood history just absolutely changed the landscape of Hollywood itself. I love this universe so much, man, and I want to see it thrive. And I think it's important for us to voice our criticisms and concerns and bring this stuff to light so like that Marvel can make the necessary changes and, and instead of us just sitting here taking the same stuff over and over and over again and watching the franchise we love so much just diminish over time. So with that being said, let me know what you guys thought of this variety article, all of the stuff that's come to light over the past few days in the comment section down below. Again, I think in the long run, the necessary changes will be made and Marvel will course correct. And I'm optimistic about that. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching this video. I love you guys 3000. Let me know in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.